We now have the CEO of um, Nevomo, and he will talk about MagRail, how can railways evolve towards the Hyperloop. I'm really looking forward to it. Please welcome Milan Kromik. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to welcome you. Uh, the organizers, thank you very much for having the opportunity to talk about our Magre solution today. Uh, we are really enjoying this event, and I we would like to show you uh, what we have prepared for today. My name is Milan Kromik, as said, I'm the CEO uh, of uh, Nevomo, and let me first introduce you shortly uh, who we are. Uh, we are creating a bridge solution. We are a Hyperloop com company, but we are creating a bridge solution, uh, interoperabil uh, interoperabil one, that should be um, an intermediary solution on the way towards Hyperloop. How do we want to do it? By digitalizing the current railway infrastructure. So we are working on the existing railway uh, legacy infrastructure, and we are bringing new modes of propulsion and suspension to the system. Of course, as I say, uh, everybody is speaking about electromobility today and green future, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we have one big advantage in railways that basically we are green already since many, many years because pretty much everybody is already uh, running the vehicles with electricity. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on the crossroads today. Uh, most people understand that uh, uh, we are facing major economic challenges in current transportation systems, and these systems are not really sustainable. You can see that. This has major impacts on our economy. You can see, and these are EU data from uh, the Statistic uh, Bureau, that it has major impacts on the economy regarding delays. It has major impacts on the economy re regarding congestions. And you can, you can see the numbers, how much harm it brings actually uh, to the economy of Europe. So what is the solution to that? We have, of course, road transportation, we have air transportation, and we have rail transportation. And what is the solution? Shall we build more roads? Shall we go with more cars on the roads? You can see that you can still stand in the same traffic jam no matter what you're driving, right? A combustion engine, electric engine, you are taking a cab, you are still going to end up in the same traffic jam. The same stuff, airplanes. I, I don't know if you have ever looked at flight radar, but flight radar is quite clear. You know, there is so much congestion that you cannot implement or, uh, or add additional uh, routes. And railway transportation is the same. Sometimes it's so packed that you have no additional capacity already on the railway infrastructure, so you need to look for other solutions. And this is what we are trying to do. Uh, this is a very interesting chart, and you can see that railway, a couple of decades ago, or even hundreds, hundreds of years ago, uh, was a major system uh, or a major means of transportation. But with Ford Model T, etc., etc., you had more and more cars appearing, and after the Second World War with scalable uh, aircraft solutions, you had the same in the aircraft industry. So I guess that you agree with me that we are here just because it looks like this and railway needs to be changed. And of course, fortunately, we have the European Union, and the European Union uh, drives the uh, improvements, drives innovations. So we have to do uh, or make our railway transportation more sustainable, or the transportation in general. We have to make it multimodal. Uh, we have to make it more sustainable, more green. Uh, and we have to move increasingly more traffic from roads and from air to the railway. But, you know, is the railway industry really ready for that? And we think it's not. So, we have our pain points, right? And I will talk about a couple of them, like inefficient uh, operational model, which comes from long, heavy trains, you know, the steel-on-steel -steel in, uh, interface. It's still the same, it's basically the same technology that we use since, uh, we've been using since 190 years. We have high power consumption in here, and it's caused mainly due to the fact that we have really those long, heavy, heavy trains. Uh, so we need to change that as well. We have great end issues. So you know that you know, if you want to go on higher inclines, you, and with cargo trains, you can use two locomotives. You know, it's still a little of an issue. So a solution to this would be a linear motor. And this is a Hyperloop-like solution, is it? Then we have a lot of friction. So we have mechanical contact, significant wear off. You know, the higher uh, speed you have, the basically more wear off you have. So it's also not so sustainable. And of course, you have the noise pollution. 
And then you have atmospheric environment, uh, environment which causes aerodynamic drag, so this is a source of inefficiency as well in a way. Uh, weather conditions, of course, etc., etc. So you see that we have linear motor to solve the propulsion issues, we have magnetic levitation to solve the friction issues, and then we have a low pressure environment that basically solves all the environment issues, uh, let's say weather conditions, etc., etc. So these are the three typical elements of, uh, of Hyperloop. And we were thinking about what to do because, you know, Hyperloop is, uh, is the future. I think we can all agree that this is the future, but it's maybe a little distant future in a way. And we were thinking what to do, you know, to make it the future closer even. So we said, okay, so what would happen if we took two out of these three Hyperloop elements or most major Hyperloop principles and we implemented them on the current railway infrastructure. And we have got our MagRail solution. So this is our solution to uh, the current uh, traffic problems or rail railway pain issues. And this is how it looks like. So eventually we are going towards Hyperloop. We understand that. We, we want to avoid the faith of Maglev, which is a great technology, but you needed to, to construct a completely new infrastructure. So we are trying to work what we have now, and we are trying to, uh, to upgrade it to uh, a solution that is, that is more modern, more sustainable. This is our path, ladies and gentlemen. So we have the first demonstration behind us in 2019. We have done mid-scale tests, however, with a full-scale linear motor in 2020. Uh, currently, we are building our full-scale test track or one-to-one -one test track in, uh, in Poland, Nova Sajina, where uh, we should test the whole system in full scale. Uh, it should be ready by the end of 21, and we should run the test in first quarter 22. And then, as you might know, we have signed a cooperation with RFI, Rete Ferroviaria Italiana, and uh, we are going to make a pilot implementation together with them at their test track uh, at Bologna San Donato. So this is our path. Ladies and gentlemen, shortly a summary, uh, because we are behind the schedule, so I try to make it as short as possible. Uh, we can agree that transportation is going to change. I guess this is clear. We have environmental and regulator, uh, regulation um, interventions. So this is what I was talking about when I was talking about, uh, talking about the uh, European mobility strategy. We, as Nevomo, have introduced this uh, bridge solution on the way towards Hyperloop, which is called MagRail. Uh, and we bring those two out of three key innovative components uh, to uh, the current railway industry to make the future a bit closer. So let's live the future already now. And if you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, want to know more about it, I invite you to our master classes. Uh, first of them is Magrill as an intermediary solution. It's led by our co-founder, uh, Przemek Ponček, who is somewhere there. And uh, we have a CAPEX OPEX calculation or CAPEX OPEX master class, which is led jointly uh, with, uh, by Otmar Grein, uh, Przemek Ponček and uh, Luis Navarro from, from Zeleros. Sorry, I made a mistake in the first ma masterclass. Sorry, they this, was, this is led by us, but uh, with participation of Giuseppe Carcassi and our Kasia Foliante, which is our co-founder as well. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for attention. Uh, I think that, as I said, we agree that Hyperloop is a great future. But if you want to know about a little cl closer future, maybe, then I will be happy to answer your questions during the panel discussion. Thank you very much.